Hey everybody, David here, and today we're gonna to cover one of my most favorite subjects, which is Firebase hosting. So you've probably used Firebase hosting to deploy static websites, but did you know that you can use Firebase hosting to deploy dynamic node apps? And because Firebase hosting is backed by a CDN, there's lots of cool performance tricks we can do to optimize our page load. So let's dive right down into the laptop. So I'm here in the terminal and just an empty project. And the first thing I need to do is initialize my Firebase hosting project. However, if you don't have the command line tools installed, all you have to do is do an npm i-g firebase-tools. Since I have it installed, I'm going to say Firebase init hosting. And this will set me up with a hosting project. And so I need to set my default project and then my public directory and then some other default files. And then now that I have all of my hosting set up, I want to set up my dynamic cloud functions. And to do that, I'll say Firebase init functions. So this is going to go through and ask me if I want to install the dependencies from NPM, which I do. All right, now that it's finished installing, we want to go into the functions folder and I want to install the express server framework. So NPM I express save. And with that done, we'll CD back and open up our favorite code editor. So in the code editor, you can see that we have two folders. We have this functions folder and this public folder. And it's really important to understand the difference between these two. If you've used Firebase hosting before, you'll recognize this public folder because usually your entire static application goes inside of here. But now that we can do things dynamically, our dynamic server code goes into our functions folder. And the reason why they are separate is because they actually go to two different places. So if you need something to generate your assets dynamically, it needs to also be in the functions folder. So I'm going to go into the index.js file, and you can see that we actually have this little boilerplate cloud function. So I'm going to uncommon it, and we're going to go step by step and see what's going on. So the first thing you do is you require from the Firebase functions SDK, and then from here, we create a HTTPS function. And what this says is, is that every single time there is a request to this function, we can take in the request and handle the response. And then also what we're doing is, is we're taking the results of this function and we are storing it to an export. And right now we're naming the export hello world. So all of the dynamic code can happen inside of this on request callback. But it's probably likely that you don't want your entire server operating in one callback. So instead we're going to use express. So to use Express, we're going to go up here to the top and require from Express. And then once we have Express imported, we can create an Express app. And an Express app allows us to listen to when a user or machine sends us a request, and then we can handle the response. So in this case, whenever someone does a GET request to the timestamp route, we can get that request and then send back a response. So inside of this callback, we could do something like send hello from Firebase, but instead I'm going to send a current date. So I'll use date.now. So now inside of on request, we can actually take this express app and then use that as the parameter. So I'm almost ready to deploy this, but what I need to do now is I need to hook up this cloud function with my Firebase hosting project. And I can do that inside of Firebase.json. So Firebase.json allows us to do lots of great things like set up redirects and headers. And in our case, we want to use rewrites. And what we want to say is, is when we see the route of timestamp, we want to call the function app. And this function name app we can know to name it app because here in index.js, when we say exports dot, right now we call it hello world, but if we change it to app, we now match the same name as we have here in firebase.json. So to test this out, I'm in the command line and I'm going to use firebase serve dash dash only functions and hosting, which this will do a local emulation. So now that that's emulating, I'm going to go out to the browser so we can see right here, we have our timestamp. And every time we do a refresh, we get a brand new dynamic timestamp. Now that we have our app running, let's actually take a look and see what's happening when the user makes a request. So when a user makes a request, it goes all the way out to our server. Our server does all the dynamic generation and then sends the response back to the user. 
However, our user could be really far away from our server, and in that case, it actually could take a long time to make this round trip. So it would be really good is if we didn't have to send the content back this far. What if we actually had a server to cache the results right near the user? Well, this is exactly how a content delivery network works. So adding caching to your dynamic server code is really easy because it only actually takes one line of code. Back in my index.js, I'm going to go and create another route that's kind of like timestamp, but just a little different. So I'm going to create a new route called timestamp-cached. So I can cache the content by setting the cache control header. So using response.set, that is how I can set a header. And this cache control has three parts to its value. The first part is public. And what public states is that we can actually cache this content on a server. If it was private, we could only cache this content in the user's browser. The second part is the max age property. And max age says how long we can store this content in the user's browser. In this case, we'll set it for 300 seconds. And this last part is the S max age. And S max age says how long can we store this on the CDN? And in this case, we're going to set it for 600 seconds or 10 minutes. So now I'm going to save, and we're going to go and actually deploy this app to production. But before we can do that, we need to go back to firebase.json, and we actually need to redo our rewrite. Because right now, our rewrite only matches for the timestamp route. So if we want it to also match for other routes, we can change it to use a star star glob, which will say match any route. So now on the command line, all I have to do is write Firebase deploy, and this will go out and deploy our static assets to Firebase hosting and our dynamic code to cloud functions. So now that my app is deployed, I'm going to copy this Firebase hosting URL. And then I'm going to go out to this timestamped page. And you can see right here, we have our timestamp. So now if I pull up the Chrome DevTools, and I go to the network panel, I'm going to do a refresh. We can see that was 437 milliseconds, 228. And now if I go to the cached version, we can see how fast that is. And we see that that wasn't really much different. That was at 690 milliseconds. But watch what happens when I refresh again. Went down to all the way to 17 milliseconds. And actually pay attention to the timestamp on the page. When I refresh, it doesn't actually change. And that's because this content is now cached. So you're probably wondering why the second load of our cache page was much faster than our first. And to see, let's take a look at what's going on behind the scenes. So just like before, we have a user who's going to make a request for our website. But with a content delivery network, it's actually going to stop at this edge server, which is close to the user. And the edge server is going to check to see if the content is in its cache. If it's not in its cache, it's going to forward the request off to the origin server. The origin server is going to do the dynamic content generation, and then it's going to send that back to the edge server. The edge server is going to cache this content, which will be controlled by the cache control header that you set. It'll then send that content back to the user. Now let's say another user in that same area makes a request for the website. That request will go out to the Edge server, and the Edge server will recognize that it has this content in the cache. So rather than going out to the origin and doing the new dynamic generation of the page, it's going to send back the content to the user, and that response time is going to be much, much faster because it's local to the user. And what's amazing about this is, is that other users in this area also can make requests for this content, and it doesn't have to go out to the origin server. It goes right back from their local Edge server for a really fast page load. Now, after the cache expires, the whole process will begin again, where we go out to the Edge server. The Edge server recognizes that the content has expired, so it goes out to the origin. Origin dynamically generates, sends it back, caches it according to your cache control headers, and then back to the user where it's cached. So far, I've just added a timestamp, which isn't really all that interesting. So let's actually do something a little more advanced with server templating. Express has this really great mechanism called a view engine. And a view engine allows you to use whatever server templating language you like without really caring about the actual implementation. So what we're first going to do is, is we're going to create our server template. And we're going to do that inside of a folder called views. 
And we're putting this file actually inside of the functions directory because we need this to generate our content dynamically. So I'm going to create index.hbs. Inside of here, I'm just going to do a little HTML boilerplate. And we're going to name this app TrueFax, or as you like to call them, Facts. So now I'll create an h1 where we name it true facts. And then within here, I want to iterate through a list of facts. So I'll create a ul. And then I'll use the handlebars each helper. And I'll say for each one of these facts, we will use a list item and spit out that list items text. So now that I have the server template, I actually need to go and install my handlebars dependency and then set up my view engine. So here in the command line, what I can do is I'm going to cd into my functions folder, and I'm going to do npm i handlebars, and then also a library called consolidate, which can, contains all of the express view engines. Now that they're installed, I'll go back to my code editor. And inside of index.js, I'm going to require engines from consolidate. And then now that I have this, I can create the engine for my handlebars. So I'll say app.engine. I'll name it HBS. And then I'll use consolidate here and say engines.handlebars. Now with my engine created, I'm going to set my views folder to be the local dot slash views. And then lastly, I need to use that engine. So I'm going to say app.set view engine and use HBS. So what I can do now is I'm going to delete my timestamp routes and just use this timestamp cached. But rather than naming it timestamp cached, we're going to just use slash for the index. And what we want to do is, is we want to use response.render, and we'll say render the index page, and send back this data. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to get some facts and then render this page based upon the facts that we have retrieved. So to get data, I'm going to use the Firebase admin SDK, which I'm going to import up here by saying require Firebase-admin. And the first thing I need to do is create a Firebase app. So I'll create a variable for that. And I'll say Firebase.initializeApp. And you can get your configuration from the Firebase website, or you can use this nice little helper from the functions SDK, where we can say functions.config dot Firebase. And this will actually use the configured project's credentials. So now that we have this method, I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it getFacts. And then within here, I'm going to create a reference to my facts. So I'll say firebaseapp.database.ref. And I'll name that my facts ref. And from here, I can return ref.once, because once we'll get this data one time. And since this returns a promise, I'll chain this then. I'll get the snapshot and then just unwrap the value. And then now that I have my facts inside of here, I'll call get facts chain on the promise. And then I can return this res.render inside. So now I'll save and I'll go actually and serve up my app. So in the command line, I'll run my server again. So Firebase serve dash dash only functions and hosting. And with my server emulated, let me go check out the web page. Now when I go to my home page, you can see that I'm not actually getting my facts. So I'm actually getting the default Firebase hosting page. And there's actually a really good reason behind this. So if we check out the folders in the code editor, you can see that we actually have this index.html in the public folder. So Firebase hosting will automatically serve a static file over a dynamic route. And this is really good because if it didn't, then you would have to whitelist every single one of your static assets. And in this case, to fix this, all I have to do is delete index.html. And then now I'll go out and deploy my website. So now that it's deployed, I'm going to copy this URL. And now we have our list of facts, because we no longer have that index.html. So this web page is looking pretty bare bones. So I'm actually going to go and add some CSS. So here in my index.html, 
HBS, I'm going to create a link and I'm going to link out to style.css. You might be wondering where should we put style.css? Should it go inside functions or should it go inside public? And I'm actually going to create it inside public because it's a static asset. I don't need it for any server generation and it doesn't change unless I deploy to Firebase hosting. So I'm going to use a little snippet here. Now I'm going to save and we're going to deploy. Now when we go back to our page, we have our nice styled version. And the great thing is, is when we go to our network, you can see that each one of them have a nice low latency and they're all served over the same domain. And you actually can generate more than just HTML content. You can generate all sorts of things like JSON. So if we go back to our index.js, we can actually take this app.get route and we can create another one, but we'll name this one facts.json. And then from here, rather than calling res.render, I can call res.json and then just pass back the facts. And then now, rather than serving up HTML, I actually have created myself a JSON API with a CDN caching layer. And then now I'll go out and deploy my website. So now after I deploy, I can go out to facts.json and you can see that we have all of our JSON data being returned. So if you take away anything from this video, know that you can now host Node apps onto Firebase Hosting. And you can take that generated result and store it into a CDN for a huge perf benefit. But now the question is, what about JavaScript frameworks? With JavaScript frameworks, all of your content and your render is held up in JavaScript. But modern JavaScript frameworks have tooling around server-side rendering. So you can take that same client-side app, render it out on the server for a fast first paint. And if you stay tuned, we're actually going to have an entire series on server-side rendering with various JavaScript frameworks. So make sure to subscribe so you stay up to date. Oh, and if you were able to get an app deployed today with Node and Firebase hosting, send us a tweet because that kind of stuff just makes us happy. So that's all for today, and I will see you all next time.